Hey guys, another right dev here. Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm here with two players because I am going to show you guys how to be making a cache door in Roblox Studio. So as you can see, if I had zero coins right now, but if I were to pick up this coins, get a hundred more. But I need 250 coins to purchase this door. If I were to get two, 250 coins, I can click purchase and the door disappears for me. I can now walk through it and I lost 250 coins. But as you can see, this guy right here, he cannot walk through the door. And you can see he cannot afford it either. Once he has them, he can click first purchase and he can also walk through the door. Congratulations to Devless or you 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 poo five for winning today's daily giveaway i hope you enjoy your 15 robux make sure to join the group for a chance to win robux every video anyway i'll see you guys in the video see ya all right guys i'm in my base plate here and the first thing we're going to need to do is actually create our leader stats so on server script service here if you go ahead and click the little plus sign you can go ahead and add in a script and we can go ahead and delete the hello world. So we're just going to go ahead and skip our, uh, script our layer stats. If you already have your layer stats done, you can go ahead and skip this part. All the timestamps are in the description below. So we're going to start um, by creating a function whenever a player joins the game. So game.players.playerAdded. Call it connect function. And we can set the parameter to player. Now we're going to create a variable for leader stats. So we're going to create a folder inside the player called leader stats. So local leader stats is going to be equal to instance.new. We create a folder. And we're going to name it. And we're going to do comma uh, player. So we're creating a folder, setting the parent of it to player. And then we're going to name it. So leader stats dot name is going to be equal to leader stats so now we're going to do so we're going to create a variable for our coins which creates an inv int value inside of our layer stats folder which can be used as a currency so local coins is going to be equal to instance dot new we're going to create an int value and we're going to set the parent of it to be leader stats and we can name it so we can do coins coins dot name it's going to be equal to coins and we can do coins, we can do coins dot value is equal to zero. So we're creating the coins, um, we're creating the coins value here. We're naming it to coins and we're setting the value of it to zero. So if you want your player to start with more coins than none, you can make it like 10 or something. But this is how many coins your player is going to start with. So if we click play, you can see that we have the coins value up here. This is zero. Okay, so now that we have our leader sets done, what we're gonna do is in replicated storage, we're going to add in a remote event, which is going to be important for our scripts. We are going to go ahead and rename it to door event. And speaking of doors, we need to actually create our door. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a simple door. I'm going to speed up this process because it's not that important all right guys so i've made a simple door the most important thing that you're going to make sure to do is make sure that all the parts are anchored and that you have a part right here for the door itself which you will go ahead and rename to door part all right so once you have created your door you're going to select all the parts you're going to right click and you're going to click group so it turns into a model which you can just go ahead and rename to door model now our door is looking kind of boring so we're going to add a GUI to it so what we can do is in the door part we can go ahead and add in a surface GUI in the surface GUI we can add in a text label now as you can see my text label isn't visible and in order to fix this, we're just going to select our surface UI and we're going to search up face in the properties tab and you're just going to change the face until it is visible. So let's just go through all the faces until it becomes visible. There we go. So I selected the right face. 
And now you can see we have a little label here. So what we can do is you can select the text label and we can set the size to be one comma zero comma one comma zero. And now you can see it takes up the entire door, but that's super small text. So what we can do is you can make it text scaled. We can also set the background transparency to one so the background's invisible. And we can change the font of it as well from source sands to let's do luckiest sky there we go and lastly we can of course change the text and you're going to decide whatever you want the cost to be for your door all right so for my door you're going to go ahead and need 250 um coins to be able to purchase it so in the text you can just um, type in 250 coins or whatever your cost is and there we go now the last thing we need is actually a purchase button of course so again in the surface ui you can go ahead and add in a text button which you can go ahead and rename to purchase button now what we're going to do is we're going to scale the button to a good size so for me what i'm going to do is just try 0.4 comma zero uh comma zero point fifteen comma zero right that's a pretty good size and we're going to position it in the middle right here under this sign so to position it we're just going to go to position in the properties tab we can do zero point two seven five comma zero comma zero point six comma zero so now you can see that it's positioned in the middle under this two uh, under the price label and of course we can customize it further by changing the text to um, purchase All right we can scale the text we can make the font to let's do gotham black if i can find it there it is all right and if you want to we can customize it even more so in the text purchase button, we can go ahead and add in a UI corner. So we can give it rounded corners. We can set the corner radius to 0 0.5 comma 8. No, 0 0.05 comma 8. There you go. And if you want to, you can add in a UI gradient. So you're going to select a gradient. And down here, where it says the color, I'm going to click on this and click the three dots. And then you can select this and you're just going to go ahead and create a gradient for your button all right and then you can select this other label right here and you can just make like a lighter color or something all right so you're just going to create a simple gradient when you're done you can click close there's still okay so we are almost done with our door now but there's still one more thing we need to do so what we're going to do is we're going to insert a part into workspace and we can just go ahead and rotate it. And what we're going to do is we're going to scale it to take up this purchase button. All right. So we're going to scale it to cover up the entire buy button. All right. And once you have it scaled, when it's done, it should look something like this. What you're going to do is you're going to set the transparency of the, um, part we just created we set the transparency to one we're gonna anchor it and set can't collide to false we can go ahead and rename this part to click part and move it into the door part right here okay so we're gonna move this click part into this door part in the click part we're gonna go ahead and add in a click detector and in the click detector, we can go ahead and add in a script. So we're going to start by creating a few variables. First of all, we're going to set the cost for our door or how much new money you want the door to be able to be purchased for. So we're going to do local cost equals 250 or whatever you want your door um, to be bought for. Then we're going to create a variable for the door itself. So local door equals script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent dot door part all right so it's saying a variable for the door part 
and we're going to set a variable for the event value we created in replicate storage so local event equals to game dot replicated storage colon wait for child we're going to get door event okay so now we're going to check whenever a player clicks on the part so we're going to do script dot parent dot mouse click colon connect function and we set the parameter to player and we're going to set a variable for the player's coins leader sets value that we created in our leader stats script so we're going to do local coins it's going to be equal to player dot leader stats dot coins all right so now we're going to check if the player can afford to buy the door so if coins dot value is greater than or equal to the cost then so if they have more money or the exact amount of money that the door costs then we're going to do coins dot value it's going to be equal to coins dot value minus cost oops minus cost all right what this is doing is it's setting their coins um well it's subtracting um the cost from the coins so it's getting the coins value if they have uh, if they can afford it and it's taking away the cost that we set up here and then lastly we're going to fire the client which um i will explain in a little bit which will delete the door so we're gonna fire the event basically so event colon fire client we're gonna do player comma door so basically what this means is there are two things to a roblox game i guess this is the best way to explain it there is the client and then there's the server the client is what the player sees and um the player's point of view the server is what the server sees and it's what everyone sees basically i don't i don't really know how to explain it so what we're gonna do now um we are done with our door script but in starter ui we're going to add it a local script all right which we can go ahead and rename to uh door deleter all right so this is a script that is going to delete the door if you're wondering why we can't do it in this script it's because this would delete the door for the entire server but we only want to delete the door on the client side so only if the door is only deleted for the player and not the entire server and to do that we need a script in starter gui a local script i mean so we're going to create a variable for the event so local event is going to be equal to game now replicate storage colon wait for child and we're going to get the door event so now we're going to so now what we're going to do so whenever the client event is fired, we're going to connect a function. So event dot on client event colon connect function. And then we're going to get the door model. That's going to be our parameter. All right, this is the door model. And simple, we're just going to do door model colon destroy like that. So all this is doing so whenever the client event is fired, we are getting the door model, which we sent through the script right here. And then we are just simply deleting it for the client. Now, before we test this out, there's one thing we need. That's an actual coin. So we can create a cylinder and scale it up. You can go ahead and rename it to coin. It's already yellow because the door is yellow. But if it's not yellow, we're just going to go ahead and make it yellow. Then what we're going to do is we're going to anchor it. And we're going to set can collide to off. So in this coin, we can add in a script and delete hello world. So we're going to create two variables in the script. One for the reward the player receives for picking it up. And one for the coin cooldown or how long it's disappeared before it comes back. So we're going to do local reward. It's going to be equal to... Um, since their door cost 250 coins, it's going to do um, 100 coins, okay? 
So when you pick up the coin, the coin it gives us 100 coins. So this is how much you want the coin to give us. And then we're going to do local cool down is going to be equal to, let's just do 2 seconds, 2.5 seconds. So this is how long your door, or your coin, I mean, is going to be disappeared before it comes back in seconds. Okay, so whenever the coin is touched, we are going to connect a function. So we're going to do script.parent.touch, colon connect function, set the parameter to hit. We're going to check if the person, or whatever hit it, is a player. So if hit.parent, colon find first child, humanoid. Then, first of all, we're going to disable the script. So script.disabled equals true. And we're going to make the coin invisible. So script.parent.transparency is going to be equal to 1. So now we're going to create a variable for the player. So local player is going to be equal to game.players colon get player from character. And we're going to get hit.parent. And then we're going to get a variable for the coin leader stat. So local coins. It's going to be equal to player dot leader stats dot coins. And then we're just going to give them a reward. So coins coins dot value is going to be equal to coins dot value plus reward. So then we're going to wait our cooldown. And then we're going to disable the script. So script dot disabled equals false and we're going to make the we're going to make it visible again so script dot parent dot transparency transparency is going to be equal to zero so now what we're going to do is we can open up the test tab on the top of the screen and we're going to start a test server um with two players you can go ahead and click start okay so you can see I have both the players on the screen and if I try to click it without having enough coins it does not let me get through the door but if I were to collect this coin here once it comes back I can pick it up again and then I can pick it up a third time if I were to click purchase on the store you can see that it disappears and I can walk through it and 250 coins are taken away from me but this player right here still sees the door and you cannot walk through it, even though I can. But if this player were to get 250 coins as well, you can see that if he clicks on the door, it disappears for him too, and you can walk through it as well. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, sorry it wasn't Slap Battles tutorial. I just wanted to take a one video break from that. But I hope you enjoyed it anyways, and I will see you guys in the next video, which will be Slap Battles. So, see you!